I hope you're all well. So today we're going to look at creating shadow boxes and we're actually going to take a card from Design Space and turn it into a shadow box. So let's say I come across a project I really like and there is one I absolutely love. So if we go to projects and we type in snow globe I absolutely love this snow globe card and it's layered and it's perfect. I just need to play with it a little bit to be able to turn it into a shadow box. So if I select that project and go to customize, when we bring it in, you'll see it comes in as a card. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that envelope. This is what I want to be working with. So this background piece here, I don't need. So all I'm going to do is first of all, ungroup those layers there. And then that background, I'm just going to delete it. Now, if we look down our layers panel, we'll see there's a few things we don't need. So for example, we've got a score line here and then this kind of little bit at the bottom, which is part of the card, we don't need that. So straight away, I can just delete those. That then leaves me with my snow globe. Now, if we look at our snow globe, we'll see we've got three layers at the front here. So if I hide one of them, I can actually see whether it's going to be a worthwhile layer keeping or I can get rid of it. So this one actually isn't doing anything, so I can delete it. But I am gonna keep the other two. And then the rest of it, I want to keep as they are. Now I need to actually create my layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to shapes and I'm going to get a square. So mine's actually in centimeters. My canvas is currently set to inches, very easy to change. I'm just going to come up to these three lines here, come down to settings and change my units from imperial, which is inches to metric, which is centimeters. So the inside of my shadow box is 21.5 centimeters squared. Now I need to decide, do I want my frame to be squared? So a squared cutout frame, or do I want it to be circular? And I think because this is a snow globe, it will look really nice circular. So if I change this just to a gray, and then I go to my shapes and I get a circle, I'm going to make my circle 18 centimeters. I'm going to highlight, align and center, and then I'm going to slice. That then gives me my basic shadow layer frame. Before I do anything with my snow globe, I'm going to draw around it and I'm going to group it back together just so that it keeps everything in line while I'm playing with it. So that is how I want my snow globe to look. And I'll probably add some icicles or some something around that outside of the circle just to add to it. So I know if I look at my layers panel that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers to go on there. I'll probably maybe do an extra two. So I'm going to duplicate my frame nine times. Before I do that, I'm going to hide that snow globe. Nine layers there. And all I'm going to do is draw around them, align and center them. Then unhide my snow globe and I'm going to arrange and send it to front and then I'm just going to place it and make sure I'm happy with the placement. So now what I need to do is actually be methodical. I'm going to ungroup my snow globe pieces and I'm going to hide everything except for that top snow globe piece and one of my frames. I'm not going to move them, I'm going to hide them using my layers panel. So I've got my snow globe and my layer, nice and easy with this one. All I'm going to do is draw around and weld. 
Don't need to do anything else with that one except to hide it. If I bring back my next snow globe piece and another layer, exactly the same with that one. I don't need to do anything. I can highlight and weld. Now I may want to change the colour on this one just so I don't get confused. So if I just click on that, I can change the colour to maybe a, let's do a slightly lighter, bluey kind of grey thing going on. I don't know. There's perfect. I can then hide that one. So if I bring the next grouping back, you'll see it looks like this. I need to play with this slightly. So currently it's grouped, so I'm going to ungroup it. And when I ungroup it, it brings them right to the top. So I can see from that, I've actually got two full layers and then I've got two pieces that are going to be cut out. So if I just hide these two for a second, these don't actually need to be layers. I can have those as individual cutouts and glue them onto the appropriate layers. So I'm going to hide those. If I bring back one of those other layer pieces, so that's definitely got to be a layer, I can bring in one of my frames and you'll see it doesn't quite meet where we need it to. So all I'm going to do is get a shape and in this case, a square. I'm going to unlock my square and I'm just going to make it so that it does then attach to the frame. And I can check, so if I bring back one of the frames we've already created and we just arrange and send that to front, We can see that that's going to work really well. So I can hide that one. I can simply highlight and weld. And this one I'm going to have as a dark colour because that's going to be my house. I can then hide that layer. This we know has to be a layer as well. So if I bring back one of my frames, exactly the same again, it doesn't quite meet. So I'm just going to get a shape, which is a square. I'm going to unlock that square and I'm just going to make it so that it obviously attaches to my frame. So when I weld them, I'm actually welding them together. Again, if I'm unsure, I can bring back one of those other frames and just check that it's all going to work in sync, which it is. So I can then highlight and weld. And let's change the color on that one just to a blue. So if we look at our layers now, we've got this one here, which we know doesn't need to be a layer. We've got the trees, which we know don't have to be a layer. We've got this top of the mountains. Again, that doesn't need to be a layer. It can just go and be glued on. These two areas, however, do need to be layers. So if I hide this one, bring this one in, and also my frame, that works really well. But if I actually look at this layer, there is slices in there. I don't need those because this is no longer a card. So if I simply use my contour tool, which is at the bottom of my layers panel, I can simply click on those lines to remove them. Then all I'm going to do is highlight and weld. I've got one layer left to create from my snow globe. So if I hide this one, bring back this one. Again, we've got those slice lines in there. We don't need those. Bring a frame back. I can simply click on this, go back into my contour. 
I can zoom in if I need to and I can then remove those lines. Equally, I can do it by clicking on here as well. I then highlight and weld. So if I bring all my layers back now, you'll see they're slightly jumbled up. So I need now to get them in the correct order. So this top one that's at the top, I know that needs to go towards the back. So I'm going to arrange and center back. This one here, I'm going to arrange and move backward and move backward again and again. And that looks pretty much where I want it. I've then got these two layers. This one needs to be on top of that blue one so I can arrange and center front. And then my two outline pieces, so my actual snow globe pieces, this one I can arrange and center front. And then this one, arrange and center front. If I then add back in my accent pieces, so I've got my mountains. So they're going to go there. And when I bring them back, it actually shows me that this layer here is in the wrong place. So all I need to do is select it, arrange and center back because that should be the back piece. If I bring my trees back, I can see that they're hidden and whilst it's not important at this stage, I do want it to look on my screen like it's going to look like in the frame. So I'm going to arrange and move forward, arrange, move forward and I'm just going to keep moving them forward until they're where they should be and as well with this snow area here, I can unhide it arrange, move forward, arrange, move forward, and that's then exactly where it should be. So that is pretty perfect. I may just want to change the colors slightly and I can do that in a second. I now need to decide if I want this to be the front piece or if I want an extra front piece, or if I actually just want to add some bits onto this front one here and I need a back piece as well. So we'll do the back piece first. So I'm gonna bring back one of these layers. So to make it easier, all I'm going to do is highlight these and I'm going to group them. And then I'm just going to hide it. I'm gonna bring back one of these frames and all I'm going to do is go to contour and hide all contours and that will give me that solid back which will be for my vellum or my cellophane or whatever I'm going to use as a background to mute my lights and I'm just going to change the colour on that to white. So maybe something like that. So actually that layer that I brought in I can get rid of that because I don't need it and then I've got an extra layer that we created that we don't need either. So if we look at our layers panel, we've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six cardstock layers to cut out. We've got one back piece to cut out and then we've got a few little accents as well. The only thing I want to do is just change the colors quickly. So to change the colors again, I'm just gonna click on the individual layer. I'm gonna come up to my color box. I can go to advanced and I can then choose what color I maybe want my front to be. I can then go to make it. If we look down here, we've got all our layers. We can then go to continue. I'm using my maker today, but of course you can use one of your airs. You could do this on the joy, but of course you're limited to finding a frame that will fit that size and also you know, you are going to have to cut quite small. 
I'm going to be using lots of different card stocks today. I'll probably use vellum for the back piece. Uh, so I'm going to be using lots of different cut settings. Please make sure if you're changing your cut settings in between your mats that you do actually come in and physically change the cut setting as well. So I've now cut all my layers out and the first thing I advise you do is that you actually put them together without adding anything to them just to make sure you've got the right order and then anything that needs gluing to a layer so for example the green on the trees the white snow on the mountains that you glue them before you actually start putting this together so I've got my first two back layers there and I don't actually do anything with those. I don't do spaces or anything. Now this next layer I'm going to add spaces to. Some people like to use mount board spacers. Some people will glue cardstock together. I just use foam pads. I just find it's easier and for me it's quicker. You always want to make sure that you're putting the foam pads onto the layer that you're placing down. Because if I put the foam pads on this layer, I may put them somewhere you're going to see through. So I've not added spaces into all my layers. Sometimes I don't always feel the need to. Some things I like to have a bit of height and other things I don't. Now you can glue the layers together that you don't have spaces on, but to be honest, if they're going in a frame, I don't really see a huge amount of point to it. I can then place it into my frame. Now I've got a couple of choices with my lights. I can either put my lights just straight in the back or I can intertwine them between the layers. I recommend using copper wire lights because these are really thin wired so they're easy to get in between all those layers. And there you go, that's how you can easily take images from Design Space or a project from Design Space that's already got its layers and turn it into a beautiful shadow box. If anyone's got any questions or comments please do leave them below and as always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!